Why, hello there, Anxious Cynic back again with another Minimator tutorial. So one of the questions I got asked uh, some time ago uh, is how do you make an explosion, like create a hole in the, the ground? Pretty sure. I think it was the question was probably worded better than that. But I'm just going to leave it at that. And as you can see here, I've already gotten started since this is one of our brand new standalone tutorials. And I'm going to show you how I would go about accomplishing this. Now, there's probably a number of ways, but the simplest way that I have found is to start with this. Like, let's say this is your scenery. Obviously, this isn't. But uh, you got your scenery with all your doodads and whatnot. And you want to go ahead and have the hole because that's how Minimator works. You can't adjust the scenery once it's in place. So this is your hole. I already got the camera and everything set up. Not that we'll need it right now, but um, right here, the position for this is zero. As you can see, our scenery is much deeper than I needed, but I wanted to make sure I got the depth of the hole in there. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. So first of all, what we want to do is cover up our hole. So we're going to go ahead and create a single grass block. And we're going to take our block and we're going to raise it up. I've already tested this part, so we know that it's about 112 on our Z position here. Uh, the Z and the Y position, by the way, may be different for you. Let me see, where is it? There's a setting in here. Uh, I am failing to find it because I'm probably just overlooking it. Anyway, there's a setting somewhere in here. Jesus, I can't believe I can't see it. I'm, is it right in front of me? Because I'm not seeing it. Anyway, there's a setting to make Z your your like up and down or whatever and i i changed that because i wanted the z to be up and down because that's kind of traditional i think with uh animating programs or whatever so i just thought it would make more sense to me because of my understanding for it so what's your z or your y you know you can figure it out um so what we have here is this position though the height position is going to be 112 that's for me your scenery may be different but uh, basically the point of this is to make sure where the height of your scenery is so that it will be 100% flush and uniform. It's because you don't want it to show that anything is different about that area. So what we're going to do is now that we've got our, our grass block in position, we don't need to change any of these other settings because it's right in the center. And what we want to do is go down here in your library with your grass block selected under where you can change your texture, the block or whatever you had the repeat tick and you can tick that and then all you gotta do is do this and it'll repeat that block however many times you want it to. So that's gonna cover up our Y position. So we're gonna go ahead and adjust the X and that right there is gonna cover the X. So if I click off of this, you can't tell anything is different. That looks like a perfect little thing right there. So for now, while we're working, I'm going to go ahead and make that invisible. And let's just say, uh, I don't know. Sorry about that. I keep bringing out the taskbar. Uh, we want to bring out maybe a block of TNT. Um, let's see if we can find it. There it is. We're going to create our block of TNT. And we're going to change its position. We're going to center it there. And let's bring it up. Let's actually make this visible again so we can line this up. I'm just going to use this as an example here. It's going to be about 128 on our Z, i.e. Y, or universally height position. So we've got a TNT here. This is what's going to detonate and blow up all of our hopes and dreams. There's a dog barking in the background. Hopefully that's not coming over. <laughs> uh, okay, so there's our TNT block. It's going to blow up. And there's our grass. And that is sitting perfectly. All right, so now that we've got our scene set, we're going to go ahead and create a particle system. And we're going to go to Grass Explosion. Now, before, if you watched my tutorial series, we just used the Explosion preset. But on this one, we're going to go ahead and use another preset called Grass Explosion. So if you go ahead and create that, we're going to go ahead and put it here. And we're going to set our positioning. Bring it up a bit. Uh, what you don't want to do is like, you know, for instance, uh, let's bring it back here. You might would think having this in the exact like center of the TNT block is all that you need. 
Um, but you kind of have to use your camera. Since I have my camera set up here, we're going to watch this. Uh, let's actually do like that. And that doesn't look too bad, but like you need to play around with it and make sure that, let's just make this a even 135. Uh, you need to make sure it looks good rather than what seems to make sense in the editor here. You want to make sure that it makes sense on camera. Like a lot of times with uh, animation or even with filmmaking, if um, something looks good in real life, but it'll look odd on camera and then vice versa. It can look odd in real life, but look good on camera. So you need to kind of know where your camera is going to be and how things are going to be going and position things to make it look realistic for the camera. You know, the particles in here may not really look like they're coming from the object or exactly for you know, the area of the object you think they should be, but on camera, it'll look good. So just make sure this is a little tip, you know, you might want to make sure that uh, things are doing what you want them to do and they look the way you want them to look. All right. So I don't think, you know, in an explosion, we're going to have too many grass, pristine grass blocks. So we're going to change this to a dirt block. And as you can see, this preset has a ground level and they're falling through our ground. So what we want to do is go to our particle creator, open the editor, and we want to affect our ground. So with these particles already spawned, we can watch where they're going to be. Gonna bring them up here. We just wanna make sure that we don't have too much floatiness going on. As you see, we do have this issue. We'll try to remedy that. Once again, I am not well versed with particles, so bear with me. Let's let's try about 134. That seems like a good thing there. Uh, and the flying grass, as you can see, we have our typical particle thing going on here. Uh, I feel like this number of blocks is pretty good, but I also don't want them to be uh, full scale. So let's go ahead and bring them down to maybe half. Let's see what that looks like. Well, that doesn't look good at all, now does it? <laughs> uh, let's see, we're going to bring up our spawn rate for one thing. Let's make it... 80, that's, that reduces a lot of our other stuff. We may need, whoa, okay. <laughs> All right, let's reduce that. Let's go, let's make it about 35. Let's try that. Yeah, that doesn't look too bad. Boom, and then they fall down. So ideally what we would want to have happen here is these come out a little bit further so we don't have so much overlap. Like obviously you don't want floating blocks in your animation. We also will need to reduce the height of the ground here because these smaller blocks are kind of warping through. So let's make it about 132.5. That seems so-so. Some of these are kind of floating. Let's try making it 132 even, see if that helps. Spawn, getting a lot of bounce. I think we may not want it to bounce quite as much. It's up to you, it's you know whatever you want for your animation. But we're going to try to reduce the bounce. Yeah, that looks a little bit better to me. So essentially what you're going to have here, let's go ahead and clear this out. Let's get rid of these. Oh, no, don't do that. All right. So we got our TNT. Boom, it blows up and grass goes everywhere and lands on the ground. That looks pretty good. The only problem we're having, once again, is the... Uh, the uh, blocks that are floating here. So let's see, maybe we would want, what is our bounding box doing here? Uh, and then when they come out, let's actually have them spawn constantly. Can we do that? May, I wonder if we make the box a little bit bigger. Let's Let's make it about 60. And maybe 80. Let's just see what that does for us real quick. Um, let's turn that off. Boom. All right. So uh, that actually might be a desirable effect. It kind of makes it fill up the hole a little bit better. But we definitely want them to go a little further if we can. Let's see. 
All right. So I've uh, messed with this a little bit. Um, what I did was I actually adjusted the multiply here. It was set to 1.5 by default on this uh, preset. So I'm going to change it to about 1.6. And it actually doesn't look too bad. You may want to leave it on, on uh, 0.5. Am I saying 1.5? If I did, I'm sorry. 0.5 is the default uh, that it's set to with this preset. Um, obviously, as you know, I'm trying to get it where these won't land on the hole, but basically, uh, you would just adjust some of these settings. Now, from my understanding here, what's happening is the initial X, Y, and Z is negative 200, negative 200 over 200 a second. And what that's doing is causing them to blow up, I think, in even directions. Because if you adjust one of these, then it'll go in one direction over another. So if you keep these even, you may be able to increase or decrease. Let's see if we do 250. And 250 there. And just see what kind of result we get. Boom! Uh, it looks like it makes it go out a little bit more. Maybe we could try an even 300. Or actually, hang on, before we do that, let's see if we can extend this up. Yes, okay. Let's make that 250, 250, and see uh, if just giving those a bigger number does anything. So that seems to help. I uh, I think you get the idea here. I'm not going to try to make this one perfect for this example. But um, basically, that's what you would want to do. And depend depending on the uh, scenario you want, how you want the explosion to play out, you can adjust some of these settings. Just kind of, you know, use your common sense about what the preset was and what each of these may do. If you use the add one, this will add a force over time. This is your initial force, so that's how it's coming out like as it spawned, and this will add forces to it. And then the multiplier, I think, may um, multiply those forces over a certain period of time, something like that. I'm not, again, I am not 100% beefed up on how the particle system works. I basically just play with it to get it to work for me. And then uh, if you watch my animation, A Man's Best Friend, the explosions I had for the meteor there was a combination of particle effects and actual blocks. Like I actually animated the blocks to fly out to have certain ones land the way I wanted them to. So you can do that as well. This is just the easiest way if you're just looking for a quick, simple way to have an explosion go off, then you could totally use these presets and have everything work out magically. Let's see if we can uh, play this with uh, some rendering on and see what it looks like. This is our scene. We had the TNT there. Everything is fine. It looks all's right with the world. Boom! And then we get that. So you have the ground disappearing. Obviously, once again, you wouldn't want that to occur. But, you know, sometimes that's what you're working with. And uh, you just get it the best you can. But uh, it looks pretty good. Like, you just have the ground disappear and all these dirt chunks go everywhere and that is a very basic tutorial maybe i would um come back to this in the future if i come up with a more advanced way of doing it it uh like again if you do like what i was talking about where you animate your own blocks that's obviously a much more tedious and much more time consuming uh venture but you can get the exact result you want without having to play around with these particles and stuff. So that's a basic tutorial on how to use the particle system and presets and things to have an explosion go off and blow a hole in the ground. I hope it was helpful. It was rather clunky for me trying to sort through all this particle stuff, but I hope it at least inspires you, gives you some ideas, and perhaps shows you a simple way to accomplish things in your animation so you don't have to spend hours upon hours like I have trying to finagle these things to your will. So thanks for watching, hope it was helpful, and I will see you in the next video.